All right, before we get into modeling the curtain wall for the rowing center, I wanted to give you a little intro on curtain walls. Um, and I'm going to keep this quick. I did a longer one in class, and you guys have this file available to you so you can look at it. But curtain walls in Revit are walls. So if you come under wall, wall architectural, you'll see if you scroll down below your basic walls, a series of storefront or curtain walls and you'll have curtain wall one, um, exterior glazing, and storefront. If I come in over here you have examples of those. So here's curtain wall one and it's just the piece of glass basically. And then if you look at the exterior glazing it's the piece of glass that's been divided into a system. And if you look at the storefront it's the the exterior glazing system with mullions applied to it. So it's, it's really just a series and really the way the curtain walls are working is you have a reference plane that this panel, which is an gl exterior glazing panel, is placed upon. And then when you get to the exterior gl glazing, it puts a curtain grid um, divisions on it, which are really reference lines that divide it up into different smaller panels. Now you can do this um, using the internal type system where it divides it evenly or spaces it, or you can actually go in and add your own curtain grids. Now <clears throat> once you get past this point, um, what happens is the storefront comes in and adds a mullion onto those reference line divisions. So the main thing that I want you guys to understand is that when you want to pick the entire system you have to pick the curtain wall. Um, so you can see when I hover over this it says curtain wall, curtain wall one. Over here it says curtain wall storefront dash one and that's just the the name that I've given this one but it's really exterior glazing. And then if I hover over this you get a whole outline that says curtain wall storefront. Now if I come in and hover over this it's going to pick the mullion and if I tap my tab key it's going to go in and pick a reference line or a panel. So depending on what you're trying to do you have to pick different parts of the system but overall the reference plane is the hierarchically main driver. The secondary driver are the reference lines and the panels follow these. So if you want to move the panels or the mullions or something like that you need to move the reference lines or the reference plane and not try to pick a piece of the modeling part and move it. So it's a little bit different than other programs. The planes and the divisions are driving the geometry and really what they are are adaptive components. This panel is an adaptive component that goes out and seeks the corners of these reference planes as are the mullions. Now over here you can see there are multiple different things you can do with curtain walls and you guys can open up the file and explore them. You can make louvered, louvered walls. You can make a panel out of that louvered wall and place it multiple times within another wall system. You can replace the panels with doors. So this one has been replaced with a sliding glass door that you can have either open or closed, right? This has a rotating panel in it that allows you to, if I select that panel and go to edit type, you can go in and change the rotation of that panel to 30 degrees, click OK and it will rotate all those panels. Here's one that rotates around the middle. Here's a curtain wall that has cabinets in it um, and a curved arced curtain wall. You can make arcs, uh, curtain wall arcs, but you can't use splines. So, um, and then if you remember from my previous lecture, this is about adaptive components and curtain wall pattern based components, uh, which I'm not going to go into right now. Um, but that's sort of an introduction to curtain wall. So what I really wanted you to understand was sort of this process here.